I literally go to Target for everything. I really love Target. The whole store just makes us calm. I love everything about Target. I'm at Target right now. It makes me so happy just to be in the parking lot. At the top of 2020, Target secured its spot as the seventh largest retailer by sales in the U.S. With 1,880 stores across all 50 states, the company brought in $78.1 billion in revenue in 2019. Target has revolutionized the entire shopping experience, from the width of the aisles and the weight of the shopping carts, to the smell of Starbucks coffee and the placement of dollar bins. The tactics are paying off. Despite the pandemic, profits rose more than 80% year over year in the last fiscal quarter. This whole crisis has really upended how consumers are shopping, where they're shopping, and what they're shopping for. Here's how Target keeps its shoppers hooked. Expect more, pay less. That's been Target's slogan since the mid 90s. The first Target store opened in Roseville, Minnesota on May 1st, 1962. That year, Target advertised itself as a store that is fun to shop and exciting to visit. It's kind of gotten that nickname Target that you hear a lot of among customers because it's tried to bring something a little different with its unique brands and its variety of slightly higher priced but still affordable merchandise. These claims hold true for today's shoppers. I think I do have a bit of an un unhealthy obsession with Target. It's like a one-stop shop for food, for my baby's items. Our love for it has only increased because it's like the one thing that still kind of sparks joy. <laughs> Target is at the center of cheap and chic which differentiates the brand from its competitors. Dr. Terry Wu, a neuroscientist with over 17 years of marketing experience, says the brain likes both familiarity and novelty. Too much familiarity is boring. Too much novelty is overwhelming. Target strikes a balance between old faithful products and new trendy merchandise like apparel and home decor. Target has a well-deserved reputation for stocking fashionable apparel products at reasonable prices, something which has endeared the retailer to many middle-class consumers, especially U.S. women, who tend to view Target as a more stylish alternative to Walmart. Even though we don't shop at Walmart, I know that Walmart is significantly cheaper. I think that's the draw of it for so many people. Target's price points are, are pretty good. Target began collaborations with high-end designers in 1999. From Isaac Mizrahi to Lily Pulitzer, from Marimekko to Zach Posen. Target delivers designer goods for cheap, or cheap chic, as it's often called. The hype around these limited edition collaborations fosters anticipation. Retailer Target launching a new line designed in conjunction with HGTV stars Joanna and Chip Gaines. The Who What Wear collection that they do, the partnership with them, I have half of my wardrobe is from Who What Wear now. I kind of dragged my friends to go to like five different Targets. <laughs> just to find this one item. <laughs> the brain reacts to anticipation of a reward very strongly. Dopamine is a reward chemical inside the brain. When we have the anticipation of reward, the dopamine level surges. And that surge of dopamine actually drives us to go back to Target to buy again and again. This is how they build royalty. This is actually exactly how casinos actually bring customers to the door again and again. We were able to create Black Friday in April. We had hundreds and hundreds of guests lined up, all excited to get in there and shop that collection. This dopamine rush breeds loyalty and excitement, which in turn drives profit. Private labels are a huge component to Target's success. They have one of the best private label strategies of any retailer in the United States. They're the envy of even Amazon when it comes to their private label strategy in apparel. I think they are well positioned in apparel. In-house women's wear label, A New Day, accounts for more than $1 billion in annual sales. In-house kids line, Cat and Jack, accounts for more than $2 billion in annual sales. There's a reason Target brought Starbucks into its stores. This aroma of the coffee can trigger happy feelings. Scent has a very strong influence on our emotions, judgment, and decisions. 
The nose and the emotional brain, or limbic system, are only one synapse away. So smell is the most direct access point to our emotions. Coffee has another upside too, caffeine. They're more excited, they're gonna buy more. They're gonna stay there longer. They don't get tired quickly. Target's bright red and white design is another sensory strategy. Target has created a very inviting environment. The aisles are wider, the shelves are shorter, the space has less clutter. Some prefer the look to one of Target's biggest competitors, Walmart. I like Walmart. I like Target. I think because Walmart's floors and stuff, a lot of them are their older stores and they need to be updated more to be light, bright, more like Target. There's not really an equivalent to Target and we're not really Walmart shoppers. It's like horrible fluorescent lighting that makes you feel like you're in a horror film. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of Walmart. No, hard pass. The room is well lit. You can see things very easily. And also, when you need help, you can spot target employees very easily by their red shirt. I have been able to elevate what, at the end of the day, just a general merchandise big box retailer. It's open, it feels really spacious, it's just sort of like a, a feast for the eyes. Everything's pretty organized, it's very bright white with the red, this doesn't hurt the eyes. And don't discount the power of a dollar bin. Right when you walk in our Target, there's the dollar bin aisle, which is like yeah. dessert. Cause there's always something <laughs> I never knew that I needed that is right there that I absolutely have to get. It's a subconscious priming impact on the brain telling you when you shop at Target, you can expect more, but at the same time, you're not gonna spend too much money. You earn the freedom to spend more than you want. The carts. They're made of super light plastic, making them easy to maneuver. When we push the cart around, it feels easy. It subconsciously tells us shopping here at Target is very easy. Dr. Wu also says that when the cart isn't heavy, it signals to the brain that you can continue shopping. And finally, strategy number five, logo redesign. Did you even notice? It used to be all uppercase letters, and now it's all lowercase. Why do you spend so much money on something so trivial? Uppercase brand names look more masculine and aggressive. Lowercase brand names look more feminine and friendly. We have over 60% of Target shoppers are, are women in the United States. They're more affluent than the average Walmart shopper. They tend to have a higher average household income than the average American. When COVID-19 hit, shoppers' habits changed. Apparel and decor sales slumped. Instead of people shopping for typical merchandise, they were looking for very key categories like groceries and essentials. Think toilet paper and hand sanitizer. They were selling more merchandise that was lower margin, like gallons of milk or cartons of eggs, and fewer items like clothes that have a higher markup. Even though Target stores were open, many customers felt safer shopping online. They were spending a lot more on labor. They needed staff to be sanitizing shelves, stocking shelves, and in exchange for the extra risk that employees were taking on, Target gave them additional pay. And that led to about $500 million of added expenses, Target CEO said at the time. Though staying open presented new challenges, Target benefited from its essential business status. A lot of the stores that were open, like Walmart and Target and Home Depot and Lowe's, all reported really strong sales. Even learning how to keep stores clean and have employees wear masks and try to encourage customers to wear masks, they had a head start with that. Acquiring Shipt in 2017 set the company up for success during the pandemic. It helped Target fulfill more online and delivery orders in 2020. In the second quarter, Target reported really what can only be called eye-popping numbers across the board. Their profits jumped by more than 80% year over year. It was extremely impressive. I think the key things for me were really the breadth of performance, the fact that they saw strength across multiple categories, the growth in their digital business, the growth in offerings like buy online, pick up in store or curbside. And, um, you know, the earnings flow through was actually quite strong as well. 
CEO Brian Cornell shared a few strategies for this wild growth. First, Target essentially turned stores into fulfillment centers, kind of like Amazon. Second, pickup and delivery service. In the second quarter, curbside service grew over 700% from a year earlier, and shipped grew more than 350% year over year. Third, Brian Cornell attributed the profit jump to a wallet shift. So a lot of those families were taking money from a canceled vacation or a flight they would have taken and putting it instead towards new clothes or backyard furniture or other small indulgences during this time that they may have put off. We bought out every kind of lawn game that they have. We have bocce and um, cornhole and can jam. And we've wiped out the puzzle section and we've wiped out the game section. This isn't the first time Target has rebounded from a significant setback. In 2013, a massive credit card breach spurred a steep decline in profit. When we saw that consumers were concerned about their data potentially being made public. That did happen to correspond with a period in time where Target was struggling a bit, right? That's about the time they were kind of unsuccessfully trying to expand into Canada. It seemed like there was not a great consumer message around the time about that. However, Target managed to bounce back from the 2013 breach and regain customers' trust by establishing new security measures and issuing more secure chip and pin cards. But this is the same area where just last night the Target was looted and a grocery store was being looted. Just months into the pandemic, Black Lives Matter protests broke out in Target's hometown of Minneapolis, a few miles down the street from where George Floyd was killed by police. A Target store was looted and burned. Target promptly closed a number of stores to protect employees and committed $10 million to advance social justice and help rebuild Minneapolis. Target seems to only want to be on the right side whenever it benefits them, because up until the point of their Target store, Superstore being burned down in uh, Minneapolis, there hadn't been much of a peep from them regarding the Black community as well as supporting them. In turn, when the CEO stated, oh, it's okay that they burnt it down. I can build another one. It, everything is replaceable. It's just kind of embarrassing and upsetting. Another protest took place inside a Target store in Dallas. One reason for the public's reaction came from reports that Target made donations to the Minneapolis Police Department and the LA Police Department. This put Target in hot water. A big part of this is acknowledging any actions in the past. You have to address any any shortcomings you had in the past. It will feel more genuine in the long run if they invest in, in artists of color to provide artwork for people's walls and clothes for people's bodies of all types and pillows for people's homes, right? In a statement to CNBC Make It, Target said, quote, Inclusivity is a deeply rooted value at Target, and we've had an ambitious diversity and inclusion strategy for many years for our guests and team. We know that having a diverse workforce and inclusive environment not only creates a stronger team, but also provides the perspectives we need to create the products, services, experience, and messages our guests expect. Despite all of the uncertainties, Target still managed to bring in a ton of customers in the second quarter. CEO Brian Cornell talked about how Target has gained $5 billion of market share and 10 million new customers online in the first half of the year. It's trying to get more people to keep coming back. And the question will really be, once the pandemic starts to fade, will people continue to be Target shoppers? Target's long-term trend, they're acquiring customers that will stick with them beyond this crisis. The reliability and consistency of the Target brand will likely keep the company going. Its ability to innovate while maintaining a familiar brand is its biggest asset. Familiarity, novelty, and balance are what will keep it on top.